way back when we developed a kinetic model for electron transfer, for photo-induced electron transfer, really the key reaction step involved the conversion of what we called an exaplex, what we sort of stipulated was an exaplex, into a radical ion pair in which we have d dot plus and a dot minus in some kind of close association. The subject of this video and the next is how this electron transfer process, this actual reaction event, actually takes place. And actually a few different models have been put forth about this over the years. The one that has ultimately sort of won the day and has spawned a wide variety of applications is known as Marcus theory. So we'll take up the first half of Marcus theory in this video and finish off with the second half of the next video. So first, let's think about what electron transfer entails from a molecular scale view, really zooming in on the donor and acceptor and thinking about what goes on in the, in the vicinity of these molecules. Two things are going on that we need to think through. What we might call the inner sphere reorganization of bonds and atoms in the electron donor and acceptor after, after the electron has changed places, and what's going on around those molecules in the solvent, what we might call outer sphere reorganization of the solvent molecules, for example, to better align their dipole moments with the newly developed charges in the donor and acceptor. So we can think of electron transfer as involving changes in both D and A in some kind of order. So D transfers an electron to A, that's going to cause, first of all, a change in the shapes of the DNA molecules and their bonds, their bond lengths, bond angles, etc. And that's represented here very roughly as a change in the size of the circles, D dot plus getting smaller and A dot minus getting bigger. And at the same time, the solvent molecules in black are reorganizing themselves, primarily so that the negative ends of their dipoles point toward D dot plus and the positive ends of the dipoles point toward A dot minus in the vicinity of this molecule. And the question here that distinguishes the two really most important theories of electron transfer that we'll focus on concerns the orders of events here. Do inner and outer sphere motions, the reorganization of DNA themselves, these inner sphere processes, and the solvent reorganization happen in concert at the same time or synchronously? Or does inner sphere electron transfer happen first and then the solvent catches up via reorganizing itself? The Libby theory has one answer to this question and Marcus theory has another. We're going to start with the Libby theory, and we're going to think about electron transfer in terms of potential energy surfaces. We have a reactant potential energy surface for the D and A molecules, and a product potential energy surface for the D dot plus radical cation and A dot mi minus radical anion. The x-axis, just like any potential energy surface situation, concerns nuclear configuration, but also includes solvent reorganization, and the y-axis as usual, is energy. Here we're thinking in terms of free energy. And because the equilibrium energies of D plus A and D dot plus and A dot minus are equal, this is what we call a self-exchange reaction, where the overall thermodynamic free energy change is zero. Notice that these wells are at equal energy. What Libby proposed was that the solvent has to undergo some kind of energetic investment, and we call that the reorganization energy. He proposed that the reorganization energy must be fully invested before we reach the potential energy surface associated with the product state, D dot plus and A dot minus. And what that looks like on this potential energy surface diagram is we start, of course, in the equilibrium situation of the reactants, and complete inner sphere reorganization must happen without the solvent moving a muscle before we reach the D dot plus and A dot minus potential energy surface and head down to products. And so the way the representative point moves according to Libby theory is in this way. First, directly up to the D dot plus A dot minus potential energy surface, a complete investment of that solvent reorganization energy, followed by relaxation down to the equilibrium state of D dot plus and A dot minus. So Libby's idea, was that we've got to fully invest that lambda amount of energy before we reach the product potential energy surface. And just to kind of imagine what the picture looks like here, we start with DNA, completely random solvent. When we reach this point, 
The electron transfer has occurred, but the solvent molecules have not yet reorganized themselves. In that sense, we've fully invested the reorganization energy, and to get that energy back, the solvent molecules relax. So notice that the only thing that has changed in going from this point to this point is the solvent molecules have reoriented themselves, and this essentially gets the reorganization energy back, right? This is why it's called reorganization energy, because we can think of it as the energy released when the solvent molecules reorient themselves to align better with D dot plus and A dot minus. And there's a, an important hypothesis built into the Libby model that the activation energy for electron transfer is the reorganization energy, that electron transfer in an inner sphere sense happens first, and so we have to get above that reorganization energy barrier before we can get down to the product D dot plus and A dot minus. And so the hypothesis here is that the activation energy of the reaction is equal to lambda, to the reorganization energy. This is easy enough to test and can provide an experimental test of the Libby theory. But the Marcus model has an entirely different hypothesis about the activation energy of electron transfer reactions. Marcus noticed that if we start right here at the equilibrium position in the D plus A surface, we don't have to go immediately up to the D dot plus and A dot minus surface. In fact, we can imagine moving in this way along the D plus A surface until we hit this crossing point, and at that crossing point, D plus A crosses over to D dot plus and A dot minus until it gets to the equilibrium point for the product potential energy surface. Now our activation energy, which I'll draw using this blue line here, is quite a bit smaller than it was in the case of the Libby theory. We don't have to go all the way up to the reorganization energy point. So let's remind ourselves that here we're thinking about this energy as lambda. In fact, we only need to go to lambda over 4 to surmount this barrier for a self-exchange reaction. And it's actually a fun little exercise. I won't go through it here, but I encourage you to do so to verify geometrically that in fact, the energy when we reach this crossing point for a self-exchange reaction associated with lambda as the reorganization energy is lambda over four. That's actually a geometrical conclusion based on these parabolic potential energy surfaces. So Marcus theory predicts that the activation energy associated with electron transfers is quite a bit lower than that predicted by the Libby model. And the key molecular level insight of Marcus theory is that the solvent molecules can move in concert with DNA. Inner sphere and outer sphere motions can happen at the same time and in fact are likely to do so. There are also some other intriguing predictions associated with Marcus theory particularly involving situations where the free energy change for the overall electron transfer process is not zero. What happens when we start moving this product potential energy surface up or down with respect to the ground state potential energy surface, particularly when we start moving down to very exothermic reactions or exergonic reactions, interesting things start happening. And we'll see the implications of that in the next video on Marcus theory.